Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You know you are right with new RPM motor oil in your car because new RPM doubles engine life, the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Yes, compared with premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM motor oil doubles engine life. So get new RPM for your car at independent Chevron gas stations or standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. The Bad Little God, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, last week I acquired for my Oriental art collection an object of quite some value. This week it appears that the item is bringing me nothing but unpleasantness. From several anonymous sources I've received mysterious messages running all the way from offers to threats. I feel that if I'm to cope with this situation, I'll need your help. To put it bluntly, Mr. Valentine, I wish to continue ownership of this Auger d'art and at the same time continue to live. I would appreciate it if you would call on me at the above address at your earliest convenience. Signed, Cornelius Latham. Sorry we couldn't get here until evening, Mr. Latham. Hope we're not too late. Not at all. I never retire early. Drink, either of you? No, no thanks. I'd rather hear more about this uh, art object that seems to be causing the trouble. What sort of thing is it, Mr. Latham? I'll get to that in a minute, Miss Brooks. To start at the beginning, last week, a young ex-GI came to me, lad who spent a good many months in Korea, brought the item along, wanted to sell it to me. Oh, it's something from Korea, then. From North Korea or North China. It's hard to say until I give it more study. One thing I do know, it's a valuable piece. And the price the young man asked was extremely low. Naturally, I bought it. And uh, that's when your bad luck began, huh? Not at once. Not until I made the mistake of announcing to the world that I had it. Announcing to the world? Practically that. I have a good friend who is art editor of one of the newspapers... Whenever I get an interesting new item, I send for him, and he runs a story and pictures on it in his column. And uh, that's what happened with this, uh, whatever it is. Exactly. You may have seen it in last Sunday's editions. Uh, Well, no, I'm afraid I don't follow the art department. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, I'd better show you the object in question. I've been keeping it in this strong teakwood box. Not that that would prevent anyone from stealing it. There we are. This is it. Oh... What a hideous thing. What is it? It, Miss Brooks, is an oriental idol. One of the minor deities. In this form, it's usually called the god of evil or some such name. It certainly looks evil enough. That's for a purpose. You see, it's not supposed to attract evil, but to drive it away. (laughs) Which it doesn't seem to have done in your case, Mr. Latham. Uh, What about these offers and threats you wrote about? Know who they were from? Only one. The others, a woman who demanded that I give it to her. A man who sounded like a thug said if I didn't give it to him, he'd stop at nothing short of murder. And uh, the one you can identify? A man who gave his name as Radnick. Represented himself as an art dealer, though I've never heard of him. Same story from him, huh? Not quite. He merely insisted that I sell it to him. When I refused, he said he had positive information that the idol was smuggled into this country, and if I didn't sell it to him... He'd report me to the authorities. Mm-hmm. 
Then I gather what you want me to do is track down this man who says he's an art dealer, find out if he's right about the smuggling, and if the others are in cahoots with him, right? Partly that, Mr. Valentine. I also want you to take the idol, find a safe place for it, until you get the necessary information. If it is smuggled, I'll be happy to make it right with customs. If not... Yeah, I see your point. All right, Mr. Latham, give me the idol and the address of your art dealer, and I'll report back to you as soon as possible. Good. I hoped you'd do it. George, you mean we have to take that hideous thing with us? Yeah, that's right, Angel. But don't worry. This little fellow is supposed to drive away evil. This whole thing absolutely gives me the creep. It does, why? Well, carrying that ghastly thing around with us, and it's so dark out here on the street, if anybody wanted to do anything to us... Car's right here. Nothing's gonna happen. See, you're not superstitious, are you, Brooksy? I'm beginning to think I am. Well, don't let it get you, Angel. I'll just put his nibs in the back seat. There we are. Climb in and we'll get going. Yes, all right. Phew. He's a heavy little guy. Must be made of solid lead. I'll come around Just a minute there, Valentine. Uh, What's that? George, what's the matter? Uh, It's all right, Brooksy. Okay, what do you want? That box you just brought out of the house. Pass it over. Oh, no, Buster. Afraid I can't accommodate you. Now, just clear out, because that's what I'm going to do. Uh-uh. Not yet. Or uh, maybe you need a little persuasion. Get away from that car. You'll get nothing. That's what you think. (laughs) You dirty... George! George, be careful! Ah, shut up, you... Get away from that door. You big enough to break me, get away. Why, you punk. You're playing with dynamite. Yeah? Yeah, like this. Are you? Uh, You had enough? No, no, I haven't. Oh, you got to be convinced, huh? That's right. Okay. He'll kill you, George. You. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. What happened? The attack on you is over, Mr. Valentine. You may easily get away now. Well, now, look. Who are you? Where did you come from? Name is Ling, manservant to Mr. Latham. Oh. But how did you manage to knock out that big oaf? Oh, simple matter of judo, Mr. Valentine. Followed by a small blow on head. Are you all right, darling? Yeah, sure, Angel, sure. Ling had thought you might meet with trouble when trying to carry away the box. Oh, yeah, I met with trouble, all right. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have lost that round. Yes. Now, suggest you drive away on mission before large men on sidewalk wake up and start more trouble. Yeah, yeah, Lang, that's a good idea. And, uh, thanks. We'll advise employer you are quite safe now, Mr. Valentine. Good night. Yeah, good night. George, I knew something bad would happen. Uh Uh-huh. Well, it didn't, Angel, thanks to that houseboy. Now what are you going to do? Certainly we're not going to drive around with that awful thing in the back of the car all night. Uh Uh-uh. Just long enough to get down to the Union Station. Station? Why in the world are we going there? To deposit our precious cargo in one of those lockers they have there. Two bits for a day's storage and take the key. Oh, well, at least I'll be glad to get rid of that thing. Then I'll drop you off at your apartment, go home to mine. And we'll take up where we left off later. Mr. Valentine. Oh, go away. I... Well, where did you pop from? I have to talk to you, Mr. Valentine. It's very important. Well, now, that would be very pleasant, but uh, I have an office, you know. Keep pretty regular May hours. May I come to... in, please? I don't want to talk here in the hallway. Um, well, I, I guess we can skip the proprieties for once. Uh, just a second, I'll get the light. Here we are. Uh, step in, Miss... Uh... Bartlett. Joan Bartlett. Mm-hmm. Nice knowing you. What's on your mind? Mr. Valentine, I know you took an idol from Mr. Latham's apartment. Idol? What idol? Don't be funny. You know what I mean. Suppose I do. I want it. I have to have it, Mr. Valentine. (laughs) My, my, for a wry-faced little god, he seems to be getting a lot of attention tonight. Just, uh, why do you want it? I... I can't tell you. Not that that makes much difference. You wouldn't get it anyway, because you see, I don't have it. 
You're lying. No, no. It happens to be the truth. I don't believe you. You have the idol. And you're going to give it to me. Uh Uh-huh. The lady even has a gun, huh? Very interesting. I wouldn't be afraid to use it either, Mr. Valentine. Oh, yes, you would, Miss Bartlett. Except I don't like that nervous trigger finger. Uh, Tell me, do you happen to know an art dealer by the name of Radnick? Uh, A what? You heard me. Radnick, a friend of yours? I never heard of him. Why? Oh, he seems very interested in a certain Oriental idol, too. And then there's a a big fellow who should be nameless. He'd also like to have... You're trying to waste time, Mr. Valentine. I'll give you just ten seconds to... Saved by the bell. What's that? Just somebody at the door. Who is it? Your guess is as good as mine. Hello, who is it? Open up, Valentine. It's Johnson. Ah, a midnight visit from the police. Police? Yeah, a friend of mine. Lieutenant Johnson of Homicide. Better see what he wants. Wait a minute. Don't get excited. He probably just wants a little advice on one of his cases. Come in. Come on in, Johnson. You're just in time to join the party. I'll come in, all right, Valentine, but... Party. What part? Well, a little rude of you to bust right in when I'm entertaining this young lady. She was just saying that... Huh? Yeah. What young lady? Listen, are you nuts? But, but, but she was right here a minute ago. She... Wait a minute. Hey, that window to the fire escape, it's open. She must have gone out that way. Yeah, come on. Oh, you'll come on, Valentine, but not after some young lady you dreamed up. You're going down to headquarters with me. I am. Why? Because a rich guy by the name of Latham's been murdered. Stabbed to death with an oriental dagger from his own collection. That's why you happen to be the last person who paid him a visit. So, there you are, Johnson. That's the whole story. Yeah, and what a story. Well, now, look, you certainly don't think I killed Latham, do you? I don't want to think so, Valentine, but the facts don't look too good, do they? What do you mean by that? You're the last person who was known to have visited Latham. You admit being in possession of some kind of an idol that belonged to him? Now, wait a minute. There's somebody who can swear I didn't kill him. Yeah, who? Latham's houseboy, an oriental by the name of Ling. I told you he saved me from that thug. I know. They're questioning Ling down the hall right now. Well, don't you see, Johnson? Ling knew I was taking the idol with me. Now, he wouldn't have killed his master for it. He followed me down to the street and fought off the guy who was trying to get it. Well? Well, he knows that Latham was all right when we left him. He came outside to protect his master's property and went... Wait a minute. Hello, Johnson. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Get anything out? Hmm? Oh, he does, huh? Yeah, okay, thanks. Let him go and come on in here. Well, Valentine, that takes care of you, all right? Takes care of me... What do you mean? The Oriental Ling checks your story. He's given you an alibi. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's good. Hey, Johnson. You didn't really think I had anything to do with it, did you? Of course not. Now, uh, go on home and get some sleep while I spend the rest of the night trying to start on a new tack. Wait a minute. Yeah, what do you... Mr. Valentine. Ling, what in the devil are you doing up at this time of night? You will ask me to come in, please? Huh? Oh, well, yeah, sure. I just got home. I know. I was waiting for you. Oh, brother, I'm beginning to think I'd better transact all my business from my apartment here. What's on your mind? It is about the idol. Oh, yeah? Say, I, I forgot to thank you for giving me an alibi in Mr. Latham's murder. I did not come for thanks, Mr. Valentine, only for the idol. The idol? But uh, I don't have it here, Ling. There is no need to hide the fact from Ling, sir. I must have the idol. You too, huh? Why? I cannot say. Well, look, Buster, you'd better say, or I'll begin to think you killed Latham yourself. I did not kill him, no. Where is the idol, Mr. Valentine? Oh, now, look, it isn't here, I tell you. Now, come on, get out of my apartment before I call the police and have you thrown out. Thrown out? Oh, I do not think so. You remember the big man who attacked you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, will you please... He was much larger than you. So what must happen to you will be quite easy. Hey, what's the idea? One should always know how to defend himself against judo. Sleep well, Mr. Valentine. (laughs) 
In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Cold weather makes most car owners battery conscious. That's why I'd like to pass along a few tips on battery care at this time. Battery terminal cables should be kept clean and tight and worn defective cables replaced. Be sure the battery is bolted securely in its carrier. Water should be added as required. It stands to reason that good care means better service from your battery, old or new. So why not let the car saver at your standard station or independent Chevron gas station take over? He'll give your battery a cell-by-cell checkup, add water if needed, clean the terminals, and coat them with a corrosion resistant. And he'll test your battery to be sure it's capable of delivering dependable starting. And say, if a new battery is what you need, be sure to ask your car saver about the many exclusive features of the Atlas battery. Atlas batteries are built for rugged power, and they're backed by a written warranty that's honored by more than 38,000 Atlas dealers in the United States and Canada. So for complete car saver battery care or a new dependable Atlas battery, be sure to stop in soon at your independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're hired by a wealthy art collector whose recent purchase of a gruesome oriental idol has brought him a series of mysterious and threatening messages. You agree to keep the idol and track the threats back to their source. So far, you've found at least three people who are trying to get possession of it, and you wound up a hard night unconscious on the floor of your own apartment. So if your name is George Valentine, you're still sleeping off the experience at 9.30 in the morning when... George! 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 That's me. George Valentine, why are you sleeping on the floor with all your clothes on? Uh, oh, I, I guess I like it that way. Easier to get to the office in the morning. George, something's happened. You were going right home after you left me last night, but you didn't do it, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure I did. But you see, after that, I met a lady with a gun and Lieutenant Johnson with a suspicion and a little Oriental Judo and... Hey, that's why I'm sleeping on the floor with my clothes on. Oh, darling, you've been dreaming. Yeah, but it all happened, Rooksy. No, I'm not kidding. Uh-huh. Well, something happened to me this morning, too. Yeah, what? Get up, darling. Come on over here to the window. Yeah, okay. Uh, what do you got? Beautiful sunrise or something? Look down there. See him? Well, that guy standing across the street? Sure. He followed me all the way here from the office. Well, can't say I blame him. You're pretty cute. And Sometime I... you'll say that when you've finished the case, darling. Now... Look at him. I am. Well, don't you recognize him, or can't you focus properly? Well, sure, I can. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's the big lug that tried to get the idol away from us last night. Certainly, and apparently he's still trying. Yeah, but he only started things. Two other people have used pretty strong methods to try and get something from me. Two other people? Yeah, sure, well, you wouldn't understand. You weren't around last night. But they were working for themselves. The person who hired this guy is willing to pay plenty. It's all very clear now, George. Hey, look, look. There's something about that idol that makes several people want it. And I don't think it's just the value of the thing. So? So here's what we're going to do. You sneak down that back fire escape the same way Joan went out last night. Joan! George, what do you mean? Yeah, I'll tell you about that later, Angel. Now, you go on the back alley, get a taxi, and go on to the Union Station. Get the idol, I suppose. Sure. Only don't bring it here. Take it to the office. Here. Here you are. Here's the key to the locker. Well, thanks for the assignment, Chief. Now, what about you? I'm going to lead that character across the street on a wild goose chase and lose him. Then I'm going to call on a guy by the name of Radnick. Well, the art dealer who wanted to buy the idol? That's right. Meet you back at the office in an hour. Uh, Now, Mr. Valentine, uh, that is your name? Valentine, that's right. Ah, da. So, uh, sit down, sir. What can I do for you? Well, uh, you understand Oriental art, I suppose. Ah, yes. Very well. Very well. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I have something I'd like to sell. It's a, a sort of an idol. Uh, 
North Korean, Mongolian, I, I don't quite know. Oh, yes, yes. I am interested in that type of thing. Uh, please, may I see it? Well, I, I don't have it with me, naturally. It's pretty heavy to carry around, you see. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, where is it? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Radnick, I, I'd better tell you the truth. You see, I don't really own this piece. I'm the middleman, shall we say. Yeah, I'm representing a Mr. Cornelius Latham. Cornelius Latham? That's right. Mr. Valentine, you are an imposter. I am? Certainly. You read the papers, I hope. Oh, occasionally. Then you must know that Mr. Cornelius Latham was killed, murdered in his own home last night. Oh, really? Then I guess I don't have any client. Mr. Valentine, let us leave out the pretense. I know who you are. Last night you visited Mr. Latham. You left with the idol. Uh Uh-huh. You learned that after your stooge came out of a long, deep sleep on a sidewalk. I choose to ignore that remark. The fact remains that no matter how you got it, you are now in possession of something... something that I wish to buy. Hmm. Well, now that's nice. But you wouldn't want it, old boy. You yourself told Mr. Latham that it was smuggled. You might get in a lot of trouble with customs. (laughs) He let me be the one to worry about that. (laughs) Where, uh... Where do you have the idol? Oh, frankly, Radnick, right at this moment, I don't know where it is. All right. All right, perhaps at this moment you don't, but you can find out. (laughs) Mr. Valentine, I think you will sell the idol to me. I am prepared to pay you $25,000. Wow, now that's a pretty good offer. But uh, maybe not good enough. Say $50,000. (laughs) <laughs> you are a very difficult man to deal with, Mr. Valentine. You flatter me. Very well, 50000 Ah, that sounds more like it. Be at my office in half an hour, we'll make it a deal. Your office? Where is that? Ask your strong boy, he'll tell you. So long, Mr. Radnick. <laughs> Hey, Brooksy, did you get... Oh. Hello, Mr. Valentine. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see now. Miss Miss uh, Joan Bartlett, that right? That's right. Uh-huh. Where's Miss Brooks? Who's Miss Brooks? Oh, that's right. She wasn't around when you paid me a little call last night, was she? I'm sorry about the way I acted, Mr. Valentine. Mm-hmm. But not sorry enough to leave your gun home this time, I suppose. I did. I'm not carrying it. Oh, Well, listen, Miss Bartlett, are you quite sure there wasn't anyone here in the office when you came in? Nobody. The door was unlocked, so I decided I'd sit down and wait for you. Oh, that's real sociable. Well, I'm glad you came anyway. Might liven up the bidding a little. Bidding? What do you mean by that? Well, obviously you're still trying to get the idol. Obviously. I'm expecting another person who wants it. He ought to be here in a few minutes now. Mr. Valentine, you can't let anyone else get that idol. As a matter of fact, this gentleman has already offered 50000 for it. It isn't a matter of money. Oh, no? matter of sentiment, I suppose. A matter of human life. Mr. Valentine, my brother was with the OSS in Korea and Red China. Go on. His job was to track down Red War secrets and supply dispositions. He knew he'd be taken prisoner himself eventually, so he found a way to keep his documents safe and get them back here. Inside the idol, sure. But how do you know it's the same idol? He arranged to have it brought back and delivered to Mr. Latham. He even described it to me. Yeah, Brooks. Oh, this thing's so heavy, I almost... That's all right, Angel. Uh, uh, this is the Joan I told you about. Oh, it is? Uh, yeah. Now let's have a look at this thing fast before my friend Radnick gets here. But that's the one, Mr. Valentine. That's the way my brother described the idol exactly. Okay, must be some way to get into the bottom of this thing. If I had a knife or something. Well, here, George, try this letter open. Mm. Oh, yeah, that ought to do it good. I'll give it a try. I still don't see what this is all about, George. Neither do I, yeah. That's got it. It is hollow, you see. Uh Uh-huh. But just how your brother could get enough information into it to... Ah, just one piece of paper. Just one? Yeah, and it says... The former chief of Red Activities has gone to the United States as an enemy agent. He will stop at nothing to get the enclosed documents. He is a man of Slavic extraction who may use the name Kinoff. Short and dark, with a large brown birthmark on his right wrist... See that he does not get these documents at any cost. But George, where are the documents? Nothing else inside this thing. Oh, that's strange. Maybe somebody else beat us to it. Let's see. But if somebody got it first, why would they leave that note? Well, 
Well, Mr. Valentine, I uh, see you have the idol all ready to deliver. <laughs> that is very good. Well, not quite, Rodney. There are a few little details to settle first. I think not. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. This is just the piece I have been wanting. Like to look at it a little more closely, Rednick? Well, certainly. Hey, let me have it. There you are. Ah, thank you. Are you hey, what are you doing? Why are you holding my wrist? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I might have guessed it. George. Yeah, look at that, Brooksy. Large brown birthmark on right wrist. That makes pretty good identification, doesn't it, Kinoff? Hey, you stupid pig. I don't think you'll argue the point when you're looking at a gun, will you, Kinoff? Hey, perhaps I will. Ah! Hey. You are not very smart, Valentine. George! George, stop it! You leave her alone. Oh, no. No, my friend. The young lady makes a very fine shield. In order to shoot me, you would have to shoot her, too. Now, just drop the gun on the floor. All right, Kinoff, you win. Mr. Valentine, he'll get the idol. You can't let him... Of course I will get the idol and all that is in it. I am quite capable of using your gun, Valentine. Ling! You will not reach for that gun, please. Hey, Ling, Why what are you going to... you gonna... foolish little oriental? What are you... He's going to get it, George! No, he is hey, not! Look out. That should calm the gentleman for a while. Yeah, I'll say. And it should get us right out of the frying pan into the fire. Ling, it was wonderful you came just in time. He's the man. Hey, hey, wait a minute, will you please? You know this Ling character? Of course. It was his family that owned the idol. He was helping me to get it. Well, I'll be darned. Well, that sort of washes up the whole thing, doesn't it? No, except one thing, George. Yeah, what's that, Angel? You still haven't got the documents that were supposed to be in that thing. I think we have, Brooksy. Well, then where are they? Give me a few seconds and a good, strong, magnifying glass, and I'll show you. Despite the number of cars with automatic transmissions, more and more motorists every day are shifting. Shifting to the gas with all eight. For Chevron Supreme gasoline gives you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities in the proper balance. Starting, warm-up, acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, mileage, power, and area blending. For top all-around performance, try a tank full in your car. Shift to Chevron Supreme at standard stations or independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. George, you mean all the information Jones' brother sent back is on that little roll of film? Yeah, sure, Angel. Microfilm. They'll enlarge the stuff and have the complete story. But how did you ever find it inside the idol? We all saw there was nothing else there, just the note. It was rolled very tightly and stuffed way up at the top. It fell out when I banged the thing on the desk. (laughs) I really should have let Kinoff take the idol after that. Oh, yeah, except that he would have been able to get away. Yeah, yeah. The FBI boys seem quite happy to have him in custody. Say, uh, Brooksy. Yes, George? You know, I think we ought to keep this idol as a souvenir. It doesn't look nearly as ugly as I thought. Oh, that would be nice, darling. I think we should. I think so. It looked very nice Mm -hmm. in Little House. And we'll put it over a big fireplace. Uh... Yeah, Angel, I think I see what you mean. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Gain Whitman as Latham, Charlotte Lawrence as Joan, Peter Leeds as Radnick, and Byron Kane as Ling. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>